Welcome to the 2022-2023 informational update for the Pine Ridgeland Ski and Board Club. The club is open to all high school students in grades 9th through 12th grade of any skill level. We will be taking five trips to Seven Springs Resort this season. Buses depart the high school at 3 p.m. and return somewhere between 10.30 and 11 p.m. on those Friday nights of the trip. The specific dates we'll be planning to take are as follows. The makeup dates are listed as the 17th and the 24th in the event that any one of those listed dates has to be canceled due to either inclement weather or the resort being closed and not enough snow. Um, in the event school is canceled because of a snow day, the trip for that evening is also canceled. In the event of a two hour delay, the trip goes on as planned. This year is new. There is only one level of membership for the club, which is the transportation membership. That fee for transportation is $150, which is the only money you'll be paying to Pine Richland, and that includes transportation for all five trips. There is an activity fee required for any student at the high school that participates in an activity that is only paid once, doesn't matter how many activities the students perform or participate in. So if that's already been paid or they perform in or participate in another activity, there's no need to pay that fee additionally. However, if ski club is their only activity, then that will need to be paid on top of the $150. Due to the Vail Group's acquisition of Seven Springs, uh, this year all students will have to possess some type of Epic Pass in order to participate in the club. There are a few different membership types or pass types uh, first is the Epic Pass, and this is uh, ideal for those students that uh, ski frequently at Seven Springs, uh, Laurel Mountain, or Hidden Valley, and uh, are considering taking trips to multiple resorts uh, across North America. There is a local Epic Pass, which our region is the Mid-Atlantic, and that is for those students that mostly ski, again, Seven Springs, Hidden Valley, Laurel Mountain, but may uh, take a trip to somewhere else. There are certain lockout dates uh, around holidays uh, that you need to be aware of if you're planning a trip and thinking about that pass. Um, and the other one for those that are just considering skiing with the club and not planning on going any, on any other trips is the Epic Day Pass, which is what is recommended for those that are just participating in ski club. Epic Day Passes are available at epicpass.com. Uh, you will see a screen that looks like this when you go to the site. Uh, you want to select Epic Day Passes and then Buy Now. As you can see in the logo there, prices are going up November 20th. And historically, again, this is historic. I don't haven't been told for sure that this is what will be happening this year. But the Vail Group typically stops selling Epic Passes on December 1st. So that means November 30th is your last day to buy the passes typically. When you are purchasing your Epic Day Pass, uh, you'll see some things on the screen, but for the club only, the cheapest option is to select the 22 resorts, choose no holidays as the club will not be taking any trips over holidays this season. Uh, then select the number of trips desired. Here I've uh, chosen five trips as that is the number of trips the clubs will be taking to Seven Springs, but if you're only planning on making three or four, given the dates we have listed, you can buy the appropriate amount. The price does change based on the number purchased, so be aware of that uh, before you check out. You'll add that to the cart and you will complete the checkout. In that completion of the checkout, you'll need to pay for the pass. There's a waiver that has to be filled out as well. And again, those rates do go up on November 20th and have historically uh, been locked out after November. 
regardless of your level of Epic Pass, there are a few uh, things that you get with that. You get a 20% discount on food, rentals, and lessons. That does not include tubing at the resort. Um, if students wish to take a two-hour lesson, uh, those are available for groups at $105, and that is before their discount. So students will be paying around you know, $80 for a lesson, for a two-hour lesson, if they want to do that. Those lessons need to be purchased online at sevensprings.com seven days in advance of any trip. And students uh, must log in and, and register that information with their Epic Pass logins. So my suggestion would be you know, uh, for any parent purchasing that both the student and one of the parents know the Epic Pass username and login so that they can access this um, anytime they need to. There are some extra expenses you might want to consider, such as food when students are at the mountain, since we will be there leaving right after school and then returning uh, sometime before 11 p.m. Uh, please be aware that Seven Springs this year is cashless. This is new uh, for the resort this year, but they will not be accepting uh, any sort of cash payments for anything at the resort. There are a couple options that student can use for payment. Um, a Seven Springs gift card, which is not for use online, but is available for use at the resort. Um, they can have a credit or debit card. They can use Apple or Google Pay. But again, cash is not going to be an option. Um, for students that have the Epic Pass or the Epic Local Pass, parents are able to associate a credit card with that so that students can make purchases at the mountain. But unfortunately, if you are purchasing an Epic Day Pass, you are not able to add funds to that card. And that will be at the parent's expense. And the student should be aware of any responsibilities that come with having one of those things at the mountain. As always, when we are on a school trip, we represent Pine Richland and are bound by the school's code of conduct. Please behave appropriately. When you are on the mountain, it is the expectation that you comply with all safety officials, that you ski and board with a partner or group. No one should be skiing or boarding alone. That does not mean that you need to be riding side by side with a person, but you ride the lift up together, or you ski down the same trails, uh, and you meet up before catching the lift again. That way, if something were to go wrong, you can contact Ski Patrol, you can notify one of the chaperones uh, so that help can be uh, available as soon as possible. You need to be responsible with your personal items. Uh, theft is a very real thing up at Seven Springs and that chaperones are always available the whole evening in the main lodge. Speaking of security, you need to be responsible with your personal items and equipment. Do not leave anything of value unattended. If you are using the locker rooms to change and get ready, please secure things in the locker. Do not simply put things underneath a bench and assume they will be there at the end of the evening. Ski check for your equipment is available in the main lodge. And you are please using a locker if you are storing your personal items. Do not leave anything unattended at a table. I understand people may take some of their things in and sit at a table to eat. Make sure one of your friends or one person in the group is at the table at all time. Don't leave anything unattended. As we leave for the trip right after school, students will not be able to access the building upon our return. So anything that they need for the weekend should be taken with them on the buses. Buses are locked after arrival until 30 minutes before departure. So if you're taking your book bag from school and don't want to carry it into the resort, feel free to leave it on the bus. It will be secure there until we leave. But while we are at the resort, please secure all of your items. Necessary equipment is all students are required to have a helmet. There is at no point will you be on the mount or should be on the mountain without a helmet. If any student is found to be skiing without a helmet, they will be removed from ski club for the remainder of the season. 
this is non-negotiable and no refund will be issued. Students, as always, are permitted to have their own equipment. If students need to rent equipment, there are a couple options. Uh, from a local shop is preferred. Um, this way students have their equipment for the whole season. They don't need to be waiting at rental up at the resort to get it, which takes time away from them on the mountain. Uh, if you live in the area, Peak Ski and Board over on Route 8 gives the club members a discount. We get 10% off accessories. We also get 10% off rentals. I believe they're normally $129, and with our discount, we can get them for $118 for the whole season. You go, you get fitted, they send you home with your equipment, you have it for every trip. Uh, this saves a tremendous amount of time on the mountain. The other option is to rent equipment from the resort. That needs to be added to the student's Epic Pass. That can be done through sevensprings.com. You'll need to go on, log in with their Epic Pass credentials, add a rental to it for the particular trip that we will be going. Uh, with the 20% discount, it comes to $46.40. Uh, if a student neglects to do this and we need to order it in person while we're there, it goes up by $5 to $51.40. And those do include helmet rentals if they do not already have one. This year, equipment drop-off will return to the STEAM LGI instead of the stadium lobby. Storage of the equipment will begin at 6.50 and end promptly at 7.35. Students arriving after 7.35 need to bring their equipment in through the main entrance as they would enter school normally, leave it at the office, and someone will be down to transport it to the STEAM LGI during the course of the day. After 7.20 a.m., please expect to wait in traffic as that backs up entering the high school with student drivers entering the building. Um, all traffic must enter through Warrendale Road entrance. No one can enter through Logan Road up by the middle school. Uh, student drivers must remain, I shouldn't say student drivers, all drivers should remain in their vehicles at all times during the process. Only students and other individuals leaving to enter the school should exit their vehicle. Representatives will be on hand to help students unload their equipment and take them into the school. As you enter from Warrendale Road, please make the first right by the softball fields, continue around to the back of the school. When you arrive, pull forward, you'll see a series of cones and a sign. You'll enter the left lane as the oncoming traffic has been blocked off. Please follow the signs, stay along the cones. For no reason should you weave between the cones as student drivers will be continuing into school on that right side. Pull forward until you're either stopped by the vehicle in front of you or the JROTC cadet that will be stopping you. At that point, once you were stopped, you can exit the vehicle. Please grab your equipment, anything you need for the day, book bag, as once you enter the high school, you not, will not be returning outside. If you need assistance carrying anything, someone will be there to help. Again, drivers are to remain in their vehicle. If you are a student driver that has a parking pass, there is no reason to go through this line. All you need to do is just park. There will be plenty of time to gather your equipment uh, from their car and bring it to the buses after school. Once you have been unloaded, uh, watch for the signal from the cadet you will be directed to pull forward. They will stop the oncoming traffic, pull forward and move over to the right side and then return through the exit line. Registration will again this year be online through Google Classroom. Students must use their PR RAMS account to register with the form. There is a waiver there that you need to download and sign and upload, complete and upload a PDF of. Beginning Monday, November 7th, checks can be brought to the school, made out to PR Ski Club. They can be dropped off in either room 203 or room 
415 before school or after school. Please do not interrupt any classes to drop off the checks. Information is available through the club's website, on Twitter, or the preferred method is to join Google Classroom. If you would like to stay uh, apprised of notifications and get alerts, we use the Remind app. Students are encouraged to join the class code for their particular graduation year. If a parent has a student or multiple students, they are encouraged to join the class of their youngest student. That way, as their oldest graduates, they'll still be on the list to get information from the youngest child. This year's sponsors are myself, Mr. Perry, and Mr. Bickler. The club officers are Braden Perry, Andrew Salvador, and Ben Tambori. Underclassmen that wish to become a class representative, once signups are complete, information will go out about that process. And finally, if any parent is interested in becoming a volunteer for the club to help chaperone the trips, there is information on the club web or the school's website, along with uh, the information and uh, vaccinations and clearances you will need uh, for board approval.